The greatest success story in space travel began in 1977, when two research probes were launched into the vast expanses of space, and their journey continues to this day. After Voyager 1 and 2 had explored the outer planets of our solar system, they were to continue their journey, and ultimately even venture into interstellar space. In fact, Voyager 2 is still the space probe that has seen more planets up close than any other man-made object. But what has this cosmic old-timer discovered on its journey, which is now almost 50 years long? What scientific breakthroughs do we owe to the Voyager mission, and what does a probe see when it passes the boundaries of our home system? Be sure to stay tuned until the end and see for yourself what exciting secrets of the cosmos the most famous probe duo in history has revealed. Hippie culture, disco fever, but also the Vietnam War and serious political crises. From a purely historical perspective, the 1970s are best known for their diversity and contradictions. However, this only applies to our earthly home. At the same time, NASA also had a rare opportunity in space that it was determined to seize in order to take our knowledge of the outer planets of the solar system to a whole new level. More specifically, this refers to a special planetary constellation in which Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune line up in a row, enabling a space probe to jump from one planet to the next with the help of gravitational assistance, a maneuver known as a slingshot or swing-by maneuver. In fact, such an event only occurs every 176 years, and NASA sees the opportunity to develop two identical twin probes, Voyager 1 and 2, to jump on the rare planetary train. And so it came to pass that Voyager 2 left Earth on August 20th, 1977, ahead of Voyager 1, incidentally. It didn't follow until September 5th, but despite its later launch, it was set to overtake its sister due to its faster, more direct flight path. However, if we want to be completely accurate, this is not an unmanned mission in the strictest sense of the word, because, as we all know, both probes have a very special passenger on board. This refers, of course, to the Voyager Golden Records, two 30-centimeter-long gold-plated copper records containing information about Earth, as well as images, sounds, music, and messages of greeting. If an extraterrestrial intelligence manages to decode the records, it would know who we are, where we come from, and what makes us special. However, how wise it was to reveal ourselves in this way is, of course, another matter entirely. After all, Renowned experts such as Stephen Hawking have warned urgently that the golden records could fall into the hands of a hostile species, and that it would then be easy for them to prepare a devastating attack on Earth. But now the damage has been done, and the golden records could still bear witness to our existence even if the era of humankind is long gone, perhaps billions of years from now. What Voyager 2 Discovered About the Outer Planets as mentioned above, the two probes were actually only sent into space to gather new information about the then largely unexplored outer planets of the solar system. But that's not all. The original mission duration was only five years. Well, how wrong can you be? But first, it all began with mighty Jupiter. In July 1979, just under two years after launch, Voyager 2 arrived at the king of our planetary system and transmitted images back to Earth, showing the gas giant in a resolution that had never been achieved before. Particularly impressive was the close-up of the Great Red Spot, a massive whirlwind larger than Earth itself. But that was not all. Voyager 2 also discovered active volcanism on the moon Io, the first volcanic activity ever detected on another celestial body. During its passage, the probe also added three previously unknown Jupiter moons to the star maps and provided new information about the planet's magnetic field, atmosphere, and ring system, which had previously only been suspected. However, it was already known before the Voyager mission that Saturn had another ring, so it was not really surprising that Voyager 2 focused its attention on this iconic ring system after its arrival in August 1981 and the images that subsequently arrived on Earth were simply breathtaking. They revealed that the thousands upon thousands of rings consist of countless chunks of ice and dust particles and contain fine structures in the form of wave-like disturbances and gaps. Equally exciting was the observation of the F-ring, 
which is formed by so-called shepherd moons. And speaking of moons, Voyager 2 also took a close look at the ringed planet's satellites, including Enceladus, which showed signs of an internal heat source, providing us with the first indication that a full-fledged saltwater ocean is sloshing around beneath its icy surface. In fact, before Voyager 2's journey, we didn't even know that Enceladus existed, nor did we know about the other 11 new moons that the probe identified in Saturn's vicinity. After flying past Saturn, it was time for Voyager 2 to set course for Uranus. It arrived there in January 1986, almost 10 years after its launch, to find out more about the seventh planet in the solar system, which had been largely unexplored until then. And what Voyager 2 discovered here was as astonishing as it was significant. Since then, we have known that the blue-green shimmering ice giant is practically tilted on its side. To clarify, the term ice giant does not mean that Uranus is cold or frozen. Instead, much of its material is in a hot, supercritical state that combines the properties of gases and liquids. But when it comes to the tipped state, Voyager 2 discovered that the celestial body's axis of rotation is tilted by almost 98 degrees relative to its orbit. This planetary imbalance is probably the result of a collision with an Earth-sized object during the early formation of the planet. No less astonishing was Uranus's magnetic field, which is not only strongly tilted, but also significantly offset from the center of the planet. In fact, Voyager 2 is still the only space probe to have visited Uranus, making the data it collected there unique to this day. The mapping of the dark, barely visible ring system and the discovery of 10 new Uranus moons were also literally unique. Miranda, the smallest and innermost of Uranus's five large moons, was already known beforehand, but Voyager 2's flyby revealed that its surface is adorned with extreme faults, fragmented patterns, and a network of canyons up to 20 kilometers deep. However, it's still not entirely clear how Miranda's rugged surface came about. What we do know, however, is that in August 1989, Voyager 2 headed for the next and final planetary destination of its journey. And as before, it succeeded in gathering scientific data of exceptional value at Neptune. For example, the probe discovered the Great Dark Spot, a huge oval storm formation which, unlike Jupiter's red spot, disappeared again a few years after its discovery. Voyager 2 also investigated the rings of the distant ice giant, which appear much narrower and darker than those of Saturn and also have large gaps. However, one of the most exciting discoveries concerned the moon Triton. It moves in the opposite direction to Neptune's rotation and has a surface made of frozen nitrogen. Even more astonishing was the discovery of active geysers that spewed fountains of nitrogen gas several kilometers high. All in all, Triton, with a diameter of 2,700 kilometers, is by far Neptune's largest moon, accounting for 99.5% of the total mass surrounding the ice giant. This was followed by the Voyager chapter for which the mission is now best known. The Advance into Interstellar Space Voyager 1 and 2 have now put an incredible 25 and 20 billion kilometers between themselves and the Sun. And after Voyager 1 became the first man-made object to enter interstellar space in the summer of 2012, its sister probe followed suit on November 5, 2018. This means that it took almost 30 years after passing Neptune for Voyager 2 to cross the heliopause, the boundary where the influence of the solar wind ends and the interstellar medium begins. Once again, the data collected by Voyager 2 was invaluable, because unlike Voyager 1, more of its scientific instruments were still functioning at this point. Ultimately, Voyager 2 confirmed some of the measurements made by its twin, but also revealed significant differences in others. These included a sudden drop in solar wind plasma and an increase in the density of interstellar plasma. Furthermore, different positions of the heliopause were recorded, indicating that the heliosphere, the protective bubble of charged particles formed by the solar wind, is asymmetrical. In addition, Voyager 2 was able to directly measure the plasma density in interstellar space and show that, at around 20 electrons per cubic centimeter, it's much higher than in the inner solar system. The investigation of the interstellar magnetic field revealed that it's relatively uniform and stable, 
and that its transition at the heliopause is smoother than expected. All in all, it can be said that the heliopause is fundamentally much more complex than a clearly defined fixed boundary. Instead, it's more of a dynamic transition zone where solar and interstellar plasma interact with each other. So far, so unique and groundbreaking. But what happens next? Will the Voyager probes continue to provide us with unprecedented data from interstellar space over the next 50 years? Well, not quite. Although Voyager 1 and 2 are still active, their transmission rate is now only about 160 bits per second, slower than a modem from the 1980s. In addition, the power on board is generated by a radioactive thermogenerator that loses more power every year. And to save energy, NASA has already shut down a whole range of systems. However, as is well known, the pair of probes have repeatedly attracted attention with sudden loss of contact and serious technical problems, which is why we should slowly but surely get used to the idea that even the longest lasting space mission of all time will come to an end at some point. More specifically, NASA expects this to happen in the early 2030s, either because there will no longer be enough energy or because communication can no longer be maintained due to the ever-increasing distance. However, the ever-shrinking distance between you and the subscribe button ensures that you will never miss a new video from us again. Simply click on the thumbnail and subscribe to stay up to date from now on. We'll see you soon.